three years ago, I sat out to construct the most powerful nootropic stack for focus, motivation, and sheer cognitive horsepower. I logged hundreds of hours, sampled endless amounts of cognitive performance chemicals, and ran beta tests with soldiers from the United States Army. And after massive experimentation and ruthless trial and error, my work had finally paid off. I found what I was looking for. One of the things we always say is that verbal fluency is probably the best indicator of good brain function. If you have a person that's verbally fluent, or if you know, you can identify like after you've taken a nootropic or at any given time of the day that you're super verbally fluent, then you know that your brain is working very well. Uh, one of the famous things that Dave Asprey says, the biohacker, uh, who invented Bulletproof Coffee, is that you shouldn't have to hunt for words. You know, if you've got problems with verbal fluency, there's a, yeah, there's a problem. If you're sitting there like thinking of something like, yeah, what is that, what's, what's that person's name? You know, you, everybody has those moments depending on who you are, what age you are, and other things, how much you slept, where you can't remember things, you can't remember people's names, and etc. That shouldn't happen. Asprey's contention is that shouldn't happen, and really my contention is that that should not happen. We targeted verbal fluency with the Cortex stack. That's it. You know, I take it, I don't, I cycle off of everything, but I mean, when I take it, there's no question about it. It is the best stack for verbal fluency on the planet to me, you know, and to a lot of people that take it. And one of the stand, standout effects that people report on it when they send us emails and say, we love the product, we bought the product, but, you know, it's making me function better at work is verbal fluency, right? People that are terrible at it previously, they just like have an issue formulating sentences, they're not great at it, they're not fluid in their conversations, they're like, man, I'm on fire, I love it, I'm a new person because of it. They actually make a great product. So secure a bottle of the Cortex Nootropic Stack uh, at livecortex.com, what's being called the only pre-made nootropic stack that works. I don't know if I can get you the ingredients here. We're actually going to divulge the quantities, but we're looking at uridine monophosphate, CDP choline, uh, a little bit of artichoke extract, and bucopa monnieri. But the, the thing to focus on is the combination of uridine and CDP choline, particularly targeting neurogenesis, phospholipid synthesis, neurite outgrowth, dopamine release, and a bunch of other very, very cool things. That's why we, this is not only a stimulant, but a very functional nootropic compound uh, that a lot of our users are saying is close to a natural form of modafinil. Their words, not ours. Secure a bottle of the Cortex stack at livecortex.com. If you respond well to it, you will not be sorry. Okay, this is a hard one. CDP choline versus alpha GPC, and I think that this is a very, a very important video for everybody that's thinking about taking acetylcholine precursors to watch. Um, so buckle in, because I'm about to give you uh, probably as much information about these two and how to compare them and which one therefore to take uh, than, than any other source I think on the internet um, today as it relates to nootropics and stuff. I mean, you can go reexamine.com and get a lot of this, but I'm about to spill it out for you. A lot of folks talk about GPC and CDP in a very vague, you know, vague sense. They just talk about, the, oh, they're, they, they make acetylcholine in your brain. But, but they do a whole lot more than that, which makes them real nootropics. You know, CDP choline and alpha GPC are both one of the, I mean, I think they're both some of the most profound nootropics there are, besides like thoracetams and nupept. Modafinil is a nootropic, um, you know, and, and a lot of other things. So here's the deal. First of all, which is better, CDP choline or alpha GPC? I think the answer is it depends. And you know, my answer is I don't know, but you have to look at it from the perspective, the perspective of what do you want from the compound. Let's start with alpha GPC. Alpha GPC uh, does have and induce a higher uh, choline uh, quantity. In a brain, you know, in the brain of a user, you know, it's like something like forty-six or so more percent uh, than something like CDP choline in, in inductions of the neurotransmitter, the neurochemical acetylcholine. Uh, so there's no question about it that that it, it contains more choline in it uh, than you know an equal dose of of citidine five diphosphocholine, which is the the long name for CDP choline. Alpha GPC also helps the brain to synthesize phospholipids, uh, phosphatidylcholine, and I think a few others, um, which is you know m makes it comparable to CDP choline because CDP choline does that too, but 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 in a more significant way, which we're going to get to. Uh, alpha GPC for those of you who lift weights, also um, you know there's like a sort of dose dependent and, and, and dose response of the uh, the increase in growth hormone <laughs> people that take alpha GPC. 
So, I mean, if you were thinking about needing growth hormones circulating around in higher quantities than usual, then alpha, and you know, so like you want to get a nootropic benefit and you want to go, you know, and you have a workout later on in the day, alpha GPC would, would be a good, would be a good shot. See, so, you know, it all comes down to what you, you know, what you want to use it for. Alpha GPC has notably and noticeably affected, positively affected the brains of Alzheimer's patients. Alpha GPC has been demonstrated to be able to uh, attenuate cognitive decline in people that maybe aren't showing signs of dementia, but they, or at least don't have dementia, but might be showing early, early, early signs of that. Alpha GPC, no question about it, you know, uh, prevents the sort of deterioration of the brain in relation, you know, in, in relation to that. Uh, I'm sure there's anything else about Alpha GPC that is particularly important. No, there aren't very many. Uh, there does seem to be an increase in dopamine concentrations uh, after taking alpha GPC. It is not considerate, uh, considerable, uh, but it does not appear to affect some of the other alertness neurotransmitters like epinephrine and norepinephrine. Okay, so that's essentially the gist of it. Popular stacks that have it are uh, alpha brain. Um, I think one of the uh, you know one of the Nutribox stacks has it. I forget which one. You know, and people speak very highly of it. You know, you can take anywhere from 75 to 500 milligrams to 1,000 milligram doses. You know, if you look at examine.com and try to study of it, the dose range is very, very high. It's 1,200 milligrams or above, or it's like 400 milligrams three times a day. I think that's what it is on examine.com. And so, pretty powerful stuff. Um, I think it positively modulates the brain over time to where you need less of it. At least that seems like that is the case for me because I, whereas I used to be able to take two, three, four hundred, five hundred milligrams alpha GPC, I can only really tolerate about 60 to 75 milligrams now. I think my brain has just gotten much better over the years. Separate video we're going to do, taking nootropics, I think does improve the brain, especially as we look at these mechanisms over time and things that might last a long time. So that's alpha GPC. CDP choline, less choline, therefore less acetylcholine uh, per quantity of it, per, you know, whatever, 200 milligram dose of it or whatever, um, does increase the release of acetylcholine and therefore, you know, and also the production of acetylcholine in the brain, you know, very important attention and focus neurochemical. Uh, that's very important. Uh, Increases phospholipid synthesis like alpha GPC, but does so in, in, a, in, a, in a more significant way, specifically in phosphatidylcholine. But what is uh, the addition of CDP choline compared to alpha GPC is that it's dopaminergic. It, it, it affects, I forget the word for it, but it affects catecholamines too. So it's affecting not only dopamine, but it's affecting uh, epinephrine and norepinephrine and stimulating their release. So it really certainly gives you much more of an, uh, you know, alpha-GPC is good functional benefits, a little stimulatory. CDP choline is very stimulatory. You know, it's very stimulatory in that way. So it's, you know, it's working on increasing dopamine release. It's working on increasing sensitizing dopamine receptors, which is also very cool, likely related to its uridine component, which we'll get to. Uh, but also raising and releasing catecholamines. Those are neurochemicals that make you feel alert, uh, epinephrine and norepinephrine particularly. So phosphatidylcholine synthesis you know, is, is pretty critically important for this one. One of the major differentiators though of CDP choline compared to alpha-GPC that alpha-GPC does not do is CDP choline donates its citidine to form uridine. Perhaps the strongest differentiator and what may lean CDP coin to the better nootropic to choose depending on what you're looking for over alpha GPC is the conversion, really the, the, the donating of citidine, which is part of the CDP coin. It's like the C in CDP coin uh, to uridine. Now, uridine is a very powerful functional nootropic. It's not just a stimulant. It'll make it'll improve neurite outgrowth in the brain. This is something that CDP choline does. It eventually sort of partially forms CDP choline. Um, or yeah, yeah, this is one of the things that CDP choline does. It'll, it'll formulate uridine, which improves neurite outgrowth uh, in the brain. It uh, repairs and works on dopamine receptors. Uridine in combination with fish oil, B vitamins, uh, particularly DHA in fish oil, and B vitamins and folic acid, vitamin B9, are essentially the, the, the constituents in, in neurogenesis and cellular repair. So that's basically the gist of it. You've got a lot of similarities, less acetylcholine production, less choline per dose of CDP choline compared to alpha-GPC. Uh, 
but it improves and the release of catecholamines, epinephrine and norepinephrine particularly, also releases dopamine in an increased manner um, without really affecting dopamine concentrations, which is pretty cool. Also works on dopamine receptors, but then converts to uridine. And then it's got this whole secondary bunch of benefits like neurite outgrowth, um, and you know, continuing to work on sensitizing dopamine receptors, increasing the density specifically to increase the signal strength of dopamine through those receptors, receptor sites. Um, and because of uridine's work on neurogenesis and cellular repair particularly, and of course neurite outgrowth, um, in combination with B vitamins, DHA, um, you know, yeah, B vitamins and DHA, it, it makes CDP choline a little more attractive for at least in my opinion, for thinking about a, a, a super functional nootropic. One of my ideas over taking nootropics for eight years is I like the compounds that do a lot. And I like the compounds that work on a myriad of systems and improve those systems. Not not just, um, you know, like a, 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 a positive modulator of, of a receptor site like aniracetam and, and AMPA receptors. You know, you know, CDP choline like turns into uridine, it works in phosphatidylcholine, increases acetylcholine, releases dopamine, releases epinephrine, norepinephrine. So it is really a compound, a nootropic compound that does a whole lot. So that's basically the layout. Uh, to put it simply, less stimulatory but positively functional, like working memory, verbal fluency, these sorts of things, alpha GPC. Uh, much more stimulatory with the addition of all these other functional benefits, verbal fluency particularly, and then working on legit improving the brain's physical function like neurite outgrowth and, the, and these types of things, and then moving toward neurogenesis if you combine it with the right things, CDP choline. To put it more simply, because I just like tried to put it simply and went a little further than that, um, less stimulatory, more functional, alpha GPC. Much more stimulatory, lot and, and, and equally functional, CDP coin, that's what I would say. Is there a better one? Not really, again, it depends on what you want. You know, Sometimes I want to take nootropic compounds that aren't stimulatory. I just don't like being stimulated. I drank coffee, I'm fine. I slept well, I went on a run this morning, I'm good. You know, I don't need to be stimulated anymore. I just, I just want, I just want the benefits, and then sometimes I really want the stimulation. You know, sometimes I really want that extra bit because I've got a lot of work to do. My brain's a little sluggish at the time, and I just want to a power gear and get to work. That, my friends, is my explanation of the difference between, therefore, what might be better of alpha GPC and CDB coin. We put CDP instead of alpha GPC consciously in the cortex stack. But we did that because, uh, first of all, yeah, CDP coin does work and go and, and partially become uridine, but then it does its own stuff too. But the combo of the two, of uridine and CDP choline, especially based on some of the stuff that I just said and more, was much more profoundly powerful than alpha GPC and uh, uridine monophosphate by itself. So that is the lowdown, that is the rundown. Cortex X, secure by cortex.com, you're gonna love it. That is lowdown on CDP coin versus Alpha GBC. There really isn't a better one. It all depends on what you're trying to get. Thanks for watching.